Good morning, everyone. Today is Tuesday, July 7th, 2020. As many of you know, I've been listening to Ibram Kendi's How to Be an Anti-Racist. And I'm in the early chapters yet, but I find myself pulled in to the weaving of history and story that um, Dr. Kendi does so well. I vaguely remember learning in school about the creation of race as a concept and its roots in the slave trade as it moves from the pre-modern, anyone captured can be a slave, to the trading by the Portuguese of Africans exclusively as slaves. And as I listened to the recounting of this history, I knew there was much for me to learn. And so I was really glad that my copy of Stamped from the Beginning has finally arrived. This will be what I read from this week. What has struck me or has stuck with me um, these past few days as I've been thinking about what I've been listening to has been the creation of race as a concept. That it wasn't until 1481 that we see the word race formally used and then defined. And that in that definition and use, we can see the hierarchy of races being formed with white Europeans clearly coming out on top. And then there was Systema Natura in 1735 that locks in colors of races and creates homogenous categories of whole continents of people. This is the red and yellow, black and white. And while I've listened to the different categories created by the writer of this text, I remembered vaguely learning about these categories somewhere around middle school. But what I don't remember learning was that I should put this in the pile of created to gather power and supremacy, but we now know that this stuff isn't true and so must work against these ideas. So as I reflect on what I have relearned about the creation and categorizing of race for the purpose of power, it feels like one more brick wall but not a brick wall. Perhaps it feels like we're getting to the foundation of the systemic racism that lives in our country, in our world. That I'm getting a better sense of what I need to, as I keep working on being an anti-racist, work against. Because the reality is we as postmodern people know that countries of the African and Asian continents are distinctive in their culture and values. And that while there are some features shared they are certainly not homogenous, nor no more than the countries of Europe or of North America. Right, Norwegians? And yet, something has been seeded in us as white people that says that those people are all the same and that we are better. For most of us, this is unconscious and not anything we're usually aware of but it is indeed woven into the fabric of our very being. And it's going to take work and lots of learning to undo. I find myself already examining my own assumptions and ideas around a lot of things, but especially race, and grounding myself in the truth that we are all created in the image of God. And if I believe that that is true, how are my actions bearing that truth in the world instead of the untruth of the hierarchy of the races? And friends, that is really at the heart of this anti-racist journey for me. That there has been a scriptural, scriptural mandate from the very beginning to know and see and hear all people and to treat all people with the love of God as love does. And if we dig into the writings of Paul, we realize that over and over again, he tackles the question of relations between peoples. And over and over again, he reminds us that in God, there is no hierarchy, that there is no race that is better than others. For there is no slave or free, male nor female, Jew nor Greek. Let us pray. Holy God, we give you thanks for this day.
for the rain that is watering the earth for an opportunity to serve you once again. We pray as we walk through these times that you would give us compassion and love, understanding and courage to begin to think in new ways, to begin to understand things differently, to perhaps change how we are in this world, but always remain firmly grounded in whose we are, in your love and grace and mercy. And remember that all people are grounded and given your grace, love, and mercy. Be with us this day. Guard our hearts and our minds as we do your work. It's in Jesus' name that we pray. Amen. Have a great week, everybody.